Ryan with Miss Doc Geek here, and today we're looking at the uh, test sketch for calibrating and perhaps even running the uh, BitX40 radio. Now, um, I owe a huge um, thank you to Bob, uh, GM4CID. Uh, I posted on the uh, QRP Tech group. It's a groups.io group. I'll put a link to it below, and please feel free to join. Um, if you're not familiar with the old QRP Tech group, it shut down in November of 2019, and uh, right after I had joined and got some really awesome feedback uh, and and some help, and I wanted to keep that going, so I actually run that group. Uh, I, I it got shut down, and I recreated a new group with slightly different spell. It was just a, I think you either added or removed a dash. I can't remember, but um, anyway, a lot of people joined it, and so we uh, we're still there. And uh, please join us. Anyway, um, I posted there saying, listen, I, I need a sketch. I'm terrible at the programming stuff. I just need a sketch that will allow me to um, tune to, to the two of the SI5351 outputs independently. That's what I was going for. It was like a signal generator. And so um, that's what Bob gave me. But he's actually given me something more than that. Uh, it, compensates the, uh, it compensates for the IF changes. So let's go through it here. I'll, t I'll show you... Uh, what the sketch that he gave me, uh, he kind of customized it for me. So Bob, thank you. I mean, <laughs> I think I can really work with this and it's laid out in such a way that I can understand it. So I'm really grateful. Um, I see a lot of familiar things. It's just that I need, kind of needed a jump start because I want to get this project finished uh, as fairly quickly. But with this, I'll actually be able to use the radio as is uh, with this sketch. I mean, it won't have any saved memories. Uh, switching upper and lower sideband won't be easy. Uh, th there's a lot of things it doesn't include, but it gives me everything I need to start, and that's what I need. Uh, and then I can, you know, modify it or, or you go use a different sketch or whatever. So anyway, enough about that. Let's go ahead and get into the sketch, and I'll show you what we've got going on here. So uh, you can see it's uh, Ryan Flowers test sketch by GM4CID. Tested our Arduino Nano with 20 by 4 I2C LCD, SI5351A board, and rotary encoder, which I have all those things. Um, Uno, Leonard, Leonard's uh, Pro Micro, etc., should work okay. I'm using a Nano. RF frequency adjustable, 7 megahertz to 7.5, plus and minus 25 kilohertz. IF frequency adjustable, 110592, plus and minus 5 kilohertz. A short tap on the RF IF switch which is just a switch labeled RF IF to allow adjustments of IF frequency output on clock zero. Press RF IF switch to allow adjustments on RF frequency. So it basically toggles between IF and RF, which is why it's the RF IF button. And then the local oscillator frequency on clock one equals the sum of IF plus RF frequencies. And it shows that actually uh, on the on the display and I'll show you that here in a minute. I'll, I'll take a picture and, and post it right now. Okay. Uh, short tap on encoder switch uh, to reduce step size. That's easy. Press encoder switch to increase the step size. So um, short tap to increase and a press on it to in or decrease and press a hard long press to increase. Simple enough, uh, nice explanation here. Um, interrupts are not used, so encoder, encoder switch, and RFI switch uh, port allocations are agnostic. And what that means is that um, it's not using interrupts. Interrupts can only be done on certain pins, um, so it doesn't use those, which means you can move the pin arrangements to whatever pin works for you. Um, so let's look at what those pin arrangements are. First off, we have the I2C LCD, uh, which is um, I2C is on pins A4 and A5. Uh, which is SDA and SCL. And the reason I know this, not because I'm so entirely smart, but because on this pinout here, it shows SDA and SCL on A4 and A5. And it shows you the actual physical location of those. Uh, I just found this online. I don't even know where I got it. But um, these kind of uh, graphics are really handy to have. And so I'm, I'm always just Googling or searching for them. I typed in Arduino Nano pinout and I got this is actually the first uh, um, result. So uh, with that, 
I've got it breadboarded here. I'll just, in fact, uh, I've got it breadboarded. You can kind of see it. And so I've just have the display on and I have the sketch uploaded to my Arduino Nano. And it's being powered by the USB on my computer right now. I've got a powered hub. And then, uh, oops. All right, so it goes into some specifics about like the, uh, the start out, the, the initial frequency is 7.15 megahertz, 7.15 megahertz. Initial IF frequency is 110592, which is what I'm using. Um, and the, the local oscillator equals RF frequency plus IF frequency. So uh, IF plus RF is gonna be in the 18 megahertz range. And that's what you saw on, on the, um, uh, on the display. Anyway, so uh, we've got a rotary encoder on pins two and three, and you know these are digital pins because they're not um, uh, analog. The analog are A2 and A3. In fact, I think I had that Yeah, so that's not the right one. Uh, let's see, where was it? There, open image a new tab. All right, here it is. So uh, two and three are gonna be D2 and D3 here. And then A2 and A3 are these two guys right here. So uh, the encoder switch and the RFIF switch are gonna go to A2 and A3. Whereas the rotary encoder is going to go on two and three, which are the D2 and D3. And that's it. Um, the only th other adjustment I, only adjustment I really needed to make is one. I wanted a default frequency of just 7.15 megahertz. It was uh, 7.154321, I think. And then under the SI5351, 5351 routines, um, I needed to change the crystal frequency to seven point or two, 27.004186. Uh, which I know because I ended up writing it on the package. <laughs> uh, I wrote that on there just to note that, and now I have it. I'm dropping it. So that's it. Um, now I just need to build it. I need to install the rotary encoder on those pins. I need to install a switch on, on that pin, and so I need to just maybe write myself a little diagram, and then I'm just going to leave it breadboarded for now. Uh, once it's breadboarded and I know it works, then I'm going to uh, create another board that will accept the Arduino uh, Nano and uh, the this guy, and then um, power them, and then I'll have that. So anyway, that's next. So let's get into it. All right. So I spent the last probably hour putting this together and it should not have taken that long, but I'll explain why it did. But first of all, let me explain what we've got. So uh, this came from the original BitX40 build that I did, which was in uh, the, this, which was originally in this case right here, which is now just a test case for whatever I'm working on that needs a VFO, uh, just kind of a test rig. And I'm not going to use that case uh, for this radio this time. I'm going to use something else. I've not determined what that might be yet. But this this is the power supply. It takes 12 volts and outputs 12 volts here. It switched 12 volts, and then um, yeah, and then uh, also five volts. And so then uh, that is going into this breadboard, which is supplying five volts to the the uh, uh, rail here, and then I've got the Arduino Nano <clears throat> and the Curapy Labs uh, uh, SI5351 breakout board here. And it works. It, originally, it did not work. And the reason it didn't work is because I was missing this jumper right here. So you would think just by looking at the directions, it says, you know, which, one, which pins are VCC and which pins are ground. You would think you could just do any ground and any VCC. Well, um, these three pins up here, oops, 
uh, pins nine or eight, nine, and ten over here are VCC. But if you look at the circuit diagram itself, um, you'll find that over here there's another VCC for a voltage divider going to the SCA and SDL uh, I2C pins so that it um, uh, pulls them up. If it doesn't pull them up, it can't talk. And so what was happening is it was getting stuck. I'd, I'd boot it up with the display, and it'd be fine. I'd boot it up with, with the, the uh, uh, SF5351 board, and it wouldn't. So I uh, installed an I2C scanner uh, script or sketch and on, on the Arduino here and finally figured out what was going on. It would get stuck. It couldn't talk to the board here, and so it would just stop. Um, which stopped the sketch from booting up too and providing me with all this. So I'm at a stopping point tonight because I'm out of time. Uh, I've been I've spent way too long just trying to troubleshoot. You'll also notice that this thing flickered a bit here, um, and that's because, yeah, <laughs> this um, I've come to the conclusion that this breadboard is terrible. Uh, it is actually I'm going to say it's defective because. I fought for oh a good half an hour just trying to figure out whether this this was even working because sometimes it was like I grabbed another SI5351 board from my VFO uh, kit, my receiver board or a receiver receiver project sorry and it detected it and then it didn't and then I switched this one in and then it detected it and then it didn't finally I just wiggled some wires and it worked um, so. I don't know if all breadboards are like this. this is the only one I've ever owned. It came with an Arduino starter kit that I bought like three or four years ago. Anyway, so I'm kind of uh, ticked off about that right now, uh, mostly because I just spent so much time on it when it was really just a problem with a poor connection. So anyway, that's where I'm at right now. Um, here's the, you know, basically this is it. You can turn it off and um, plug power here. And I think that's it for now. Uh, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm not going to breadboard this. I'm just going to use um, one of these boards, not this board, I didn't, didn't really actually want this on it, but I'm gonna use a, um, a prototyping board and just put together you know, everything I need for this. So I'm not going to video that because, frankly, it's boring and it's not worth watching. Um, I'll show you when I'm done with it, but the process itself is pretty basic. All I'm going to do is grab a prototype board and some of these header pins and probably do a new, uh, a new um, uh, switching board here with, with a regulator just to tie it all into one piece and then go from there. That's it. I sure do appreciate you watching and I appreciate your comments. And I'd love to know if any of you have had the same issues with these breadboards here. So thanks for watching. It's 73. We'll see you next time.